Welcome to Module 1 of Comprehension, Promoting Comprehension, an Overview of Factors. What is comprehension? Here are three definitions of comprehension which are all accurate. Comprehension is a creative, multifaceted thinking process in which students engage with the text. Comprehension is a constructive interactive process involving three factors, the reader, the text, and the context in which the text is read. Comprehension involves the abilities to explain, interpret, apply, have perspective, empathize, and have self-knowledge. Throughout the comprehension models, there will be various terms mentioned. The terms are listed here on this slide. I suggest using the vocabulary self-awareness guide that accompanies these modules. The terms will be defined as they appear in the modules. They are listed here in alphabetical order. Let's begin this comprehension overview with an anticipation guide. Pause this mini lecture and print off the lecture notes that accompanies this lecture if you have not already done so. Then take a few minutes to complete this anticipation guide. For each of the statements related to comprehension, put a check under agree or disagree to show how you feel. Gunning defined comprehension as a constructive interactive process involving three factors, the reader, the text, and the context in which the text is read. Module 2 will deal with reader factors, and Module 3 will deal with text factors. For comprehension to improve, the interaction among all three factors must be taken into consideration. To understand an overview of the process of comprehending, we must first discuss schema theory, situation model theory, the role of reasoning, the role of attention, the developmental nature of comprehension, text-based processing, and knowledge-based processing. It is currently theorized that our knowledge is packaged into units known as schemata. A schema, in general, is the organized knowledge that one has about people, places, things, or events. Shown here are three definitions for a schema by Gunning, Tompkins, and Rowan Smith. Schema is a unit of organized knowledge. It is a cognitive structure or mental file. It is a person's organized cluster of concepts related to objects, places, actions, or events. One type of schema is a story schema. This is a set of expectations about the internal structures of stories. To gain insight into the process of comprehension, read the following paragraph, which has been divided into a series of sentences. Stop after reading each sentence and ask yourself, what did the sentence say? How did I go about comprehending it? What does this paragraph seem to be about? Pause the clip now. To make sense of the previous selection, you have to rely heavily on the knowledge you bring to the text. One definition of comprehension is that it is the process of building a connection between what we know and what we do not know, or the new and the old. What we know are mentally filed as units of schema. A schema may be very broad in general, for example, a schema for animals. Or it may be fairly narrow, for example, a schema for Siamese cats. Some view that comprehension primarily involves activating or constructing a schema that accounts for the elements in a text, similar to constructing an outline of a script. In understanding the meaning of the selection on the Hotzen, you used various processes to activate the appropriate schema and fill in the slots. In reading the first sentence, assuming that you did not know what a Hotzen is, you may have made a reasoned prediction that it was some kind of animal. The information in the first sentence was probably enough to activate your animal survival from enemies schema. The slots might include type of animal, enemies, ability to flee, and ability to fight. Guided by your schema, you may have been on the lookout for information to fill those slots. Integrating or summarizing the first three sentences made it possible for you to place plunges into the water into the ability to flee slot. You also did quite a bit of inferencing. When you read about the wings in the last sentence, you probably inferred that the Hotson is a bird, even though it dives into the water. Thus, you were able to fill in the type of animal slot. You probably also inferred that the Hotson's enemies could not reach it in the water. You might have inferred, too, that the animal is not fierce, since it seems to prefer fleeing to fighting. As you can probably see, comprehending the selection about the Hotson was not so much a question of getting meaning from the text as it was of bringing meaning to it or constructing meaning by interacting with the text. Although activating schemata is essential in reading, 
Reading is more complex than simply filling in the slots. As they transact with text, proficient active readers are constantly relating what they are reading to other experiences they have had or other information in the text they have read and text previously read. Their interest in the text plays a powerful role in the linkages that they construct. A student captivated by the idea that a bird has claws on his wings might relate this text to passages that he or she has read or a TV show about unusual animals. How can you build schema? Reading stories to children is an excellent way to develop their schemata related to stories or a material that they will be expected to read. Comprehension can also be thought of as the construction of a mental or situation model. By definition, the situation model theory view comprehension as a process of building and maintaining a model of situations and events described in text. It is also known as a mental model. Comprehension requires that readers create a mental model or representation of textual information and its interpretation. As they read, good readers ask themselves why questions about processes. They want to know why an event occurred or why the author decided to include a certain piece of information. In reading about the formations on the ceilings of underground caves, the reader might wonder why crystals form on the cave ceilings. The cause, which is often answered in the next sentence, is then connected to the effect. These connections are made in rapid-fire fashion. The process is especially fast when the reader's expectation of the cause is confirmed. However, if the topic is unfamiliar and the reader has little background knowledge to bring to it, making casual connections is more difficult. Making connections is also impeded if the reader is not committed to active comprehension. Situation model emphasizes the active, constructivist nature of comprehension and the importance of prior knowledge. Reasoning is a key component in comprehension. Students may be called upon to infer character traits, judge a solution, analyze a situation, compare settings, draw conclusions, form concepts, apply a principle, or evaluate the credibility of information. Attention is also a factor in comprehension. Constructing meaning is hindered if the student is not reading actively and purposefully. As students' background knowledge increases and their reasoning ability matures, their ability to comprehend improves. Until they reach Piaget's stage of concrete operations, students might have difficulty comprehending tales in which things are not what they seem. They take their reading very literally. For example, one second grader had a great deal of difficulty with a trickster tale in which a fox disguised himself as a tree to make a meal of the hens. Despite the fact that the story described the tree's feet and teeth, the student believed that it was still a tree. Between the ages of 5 and 7, children tend to think in one dimension. By about age 8, students are able to think in more than one dimension and so can learn comprehension strategies more readily. Students vary in how often they use two processes of comprehension. Text-based processing involves a reader primarily trying to extract the information that resides in the text being read. Knowledge-based processing involves a reader primarily bringing his or her prior world knowledge and background of experiences to the interpretation of the text being read. Other aspects also affect comprehension. Multiple intelligences theory was developed by Howard Gardner, a professor at Harvard University. Rowan Smith defined multiple intelligences as it relates to reading as several distinct areas of potential that readers possess to different degrees. However, multiple intelligences is not just a reading theory or process. All of us have all of the intelligences to some degree, but we have strengths in one to several of them. Gardner states that there is no one right way to use the multiple intelligences theory in education. The intelligences need to be incorporated appropriately. Playing music while students work on something is not using the musical intelligence. The multiple intelligences include linguistic, logical, mathematical, spatial, musical, bodily kinesthetic, interpersonal, intrapersonal, and naturalistic. Gardner is currently developing more intelligences in his theory. Search the internet to find out more about these intelligences and the newer intelligences. Do you know your strongest multiple intelligence? Mine is music. To find out how you rank in the multiple intelligences, 
visit the website listed here. Text complexity is a new way of examining reader and text factors to determine the comprehension demands of books, or more specifically, how well readers can complete an assigned task with a particular text. There are three general factors that affect text complexity. Qualitative dimensions, quantitative dimensions, and reader and task considerations. In qualitative dimensions, teachers make informed judgments about a book's grade appropriateness by examining its layout, its text structure, language features, purpose and meaning, as well as the demands placed on readers' background knowledge. These dimensions are difficult to evaluate because they can't easily be qualified. In quantitative measures, teachers use readability formulas or other scores to determine a book's grade appropriateness by calculating word length, word frequency, word difficulty, sentence length, text length, and other quantitative features. They often rely on computer software to determine reading levels, such as Lexile scores. The Fry readability formula is something you can use that does not require a computer software program. In reader and task considerations, teachers reflect on how they expect students to interact with the book, on students' literary knowledge and strategy use, and their motivation and interests. With instruction, students grow in their understanding of how to read complex texts, and they learn to think about ideas and information in different ways. For instance, young students are often asked to examine the theme in one story, but older students are asked to investigate how the point of view in two novels influences the theme. Shown here are some suggested books with complex texts by grade level. Print off the lecture notes for a list to begin collecting books for your preferred grade level. Students do well in early grades, but lose momentum as they advance in the grades. To close this gap, it is recommended that more attention be paid to developing comprehension and high-level thinking skills, applying skills in the content areas, making connections, and integrating instruction.